With summer around the corner and growth picking up, there's the temptation to take the foot off the gas and just cruise along to harvests. But that would be a big mistake because now's the ideal time to sow even more to enjoy later on in the growing season and way beyond that. So let's bust open the seed box once again and get sowing. Carrots and beets or beetroot will carry on yielding their tasty roots well into autumn. But you can also lift main crop varieties to store in boxes of damp sand or potting mix to enjoy throughout the winter. With many of the summer crops now planted, space is beginning to get a little bit uh, at a premium in my vegetable garden. However, I have a canny space saving trick I'd like to share with you. These garlic here will be harvested in a few weeks once the leaves start to turn yellow. So at this point, there's no harm in a little competition, especially as what I'm about to sow won't really get to any appreciable size until two to three weeks later. So I'm going to sow some carrots in between these garlic. So I'm just gonna make a row in between the garlic, nice and even, uh, about half an inch or a centimeter deep like that, and then just a really scant pinch of seeds should do a short row like this. Sow them along like that, and then we're just gonna cover them over. Now, once the carrots grow up and need the space, well, these garlic should hopefully be gone by then, so then they can bush out. What I really love about this method is that you're literally overlapping your crops in the same space, so it makes a really, really efficient use of space. Beets or beetroot can also be sown directly where they are to grow and the bigger, knobblier seeds make them a lot easier to sow individually. I'm spacing them about a half an inch or a centimetre apart and then uh, if necessary I can thin them out a little bit more once they have germinated. Alternatively, if there's not much space in the veg garden, you can sow three or four seeds into each plug of a plug tray and then grow them on to plant outside after about a month or so when hopefully some more space should be available. Now that's what I did with these guys here, planted them as clusters and you can see they're beginning to really pull away. Can't wait to harvest them. I love my salad leaves as the base to a delicious and healthy al fresco summer lunch paired with real goodies like salad onions and radishes. Just delicious, especially when you drizzle over a zingy dressing over the top. Now many salad leaves will already have been harvested from earlier spring sowings or may be about to come to the end of their life. So it makes sense to sow a few more now. I like to sow salad leaves into plug trays to grow on and then plant out. That way I can have them ready waiting in the wings to go in as soon as there's space in the ground. But if you have got space in the ground, well then why not sow them directly? Now I'm going to be sowing a row of salad leaves as cut and come again. Now if you're wondering what cut and come again means, that simply means when you harvest a few leaves from uh, each plant at a time and then leave the plant to grow on, cut and come again. The new leaves will grow to replace the old ones. Now you can grow individual plants like this and then harvest the leaves one at a time so that you're dramatically extending the life of the plant because you're not harvesting it all in one go. Or you can grow the plants a little bit closer together in a row like I'm about to do to grow a salad leaf mix. So the drill is all marked out, it's about half an inch or a centimetre deep again and I've just got a short scant pinch of seeds which should be enough for this short row and again just letting them drop down fairly nicely spaced and then if necessary I will thin these guys to leave about a couple of inches or five centimetres between each plant and then cover them over. And we'll sure now give it all a little bit of a drink to get it all on its way. Salad leaves and especially lettuce can be a real pain to germinate when it's hot. So if you're sowing these when it's quite warm, you have a couple of options. First, sow early in the evening once the temperature has started to cool off a bit. And secondly, cover the sown area with a plank of wood to shade the soil and keep it cool. And of course, you will need to check regularly for the seedlings and remove the plank as soon as the seedlings appear. 
Salads, especially cut and come again salad mixes, are great for container growing too because they are typically quite compact plants. This lot I sowed a few weeks earlier and I think they're looking jolly good. One salad that is actually really good to sow after the summer solstice once days are beginning to shorten again is uh, rocket or arugula. Now, I've often found this salad really frustrating in the past because it's almost immediately bolted or gone to flower, and that means there's much less scope for getting those deliciously, satisfyingly spicy leaves. But sow them as days are beginning to shorten again, and you will have none of that problem at all. Now, if you do like uh, growing containers and want to know more about that, then please do make sure you are subscribed and of course have ding-dong that notification bell so we can let you know every time we upload a video. If you didn't know, subscribing is free and it helps our gardening content pop up in your YouTube feed and who wouldn't want that? Bulb or Florence fennel can also be fickle earlier on in the season and can grow thin and rise to flower much like arugula. When you sow it, when it's warmer weather however, you'll have none of those problems and we should get to harvest without any problems. I view fennel as the queen of vegetables. If asparagus here is the king, then Bulb or Florence fennel is queen. I reckon it's something to do with its beautiful aniseed perfume or perhaps its fulsome figure. What do you reckon? But did you know that fennel isn't in fact a true bulb, but rather a series of swollen stems all closely packed together? I think that's pretty cool. So with space a bit tight up in the veg garden and lots of things to be planted in the gaps I do have, I've decided to sow some fennel into plug trays uh, and they'll be planted out once there is enough space. So I'm just going in with two to three seeds per plug and uh, then I will thin the seedlings to leave the strongest in each. And then just cover them over with a bit more potting mix and I'm just sieving or screening it to get a nice fine covering like this. So these will be planted out once the roots have filled the plug and fennel loves a warm, sunny and moist soil. So I think they will love it up there as the summer progresses. Early summer is the ideal time to be sowing cabbage family favorites that will grow on into autumn and well beyond. I'm going to be sowing three of them, kale, broccoli, and the outrageously crinkled Savoy cabbage. For me, kale has to be my number one autumn through to winter staple. This offers up its beautifully crinkled strap-like leaves again and again. Now, I can't think that anything can beat the Cavolo Nero, also known as black Tuscan kale or dinosaur kale due to those crinkled leaves. And the leaves are easy to strip away from the central midrib. This is my number one brassica of all. Uh, next up, I'm gonna be sowing some sprouting broccoli. This is purple sprouting broccoli. Now this one is great to overwinter and then give lovely, beautiful, healthy heads from kind of early spring onwards at a time when there's very little else to pick. And then finally, I'm gonna be sowing those Savoy cabbages, which will crop from about early winter. Perfect for serving up your own homegrown Christmas dinner to impress the relatives. I prefer to start my brassicas off in exactly the same way by sowing them into pots of uh, potting mix here. This is peat free and I've sieved it just to give a nice fine texture. Then once the seedlings are up, I will transfer one seedling into each plug. Now, I'm often asked why not just sow straight into the plug trays and do without that? Well, there are a number of reasons. I can make sure I get exactly one seedling per plug. And to be honest, I just really enjoy handling the seedlings and having the satisfaction of, of them all transplanted into their plug trays and growing on. So all I'm doing is just sowing a small pinch of seeds across the surface of my firmed in potting mix like that. And then to finish, just cover the seeds over with a little more of your potting mix like that. Now, if your soil uh, potting mix is very dry, then you can just wet it beforehand and it'll make it a lot easier to handle and then water when you come to water those seeds in. 
And of course, don't forget to label your pots or plug trays once you have sown them because these are all brassicas or cabbage family plants and the seedlings look almost identical. So it's very easy to get them mixed up, believe me. I know that from personal experience. Once the uh, young plants have filled their plug trays, they'll be good to go outside. Now kale or cabbage will go about 18 inches, that's 45 centimetres apart in both directions, and the sprouting broccoli will be a couple of feet or 60 centimetres between them. And crucially, they will need protecting from those pesky pigeons and butterflies. Now please do tell me, how is your garden progressing so far this season? Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to know more about growing kale, broccoli, or any vegetables for that matter, please be sure to check out our sowing to harvest guides. I'll catch you next time.